Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with KLCS in Los Angeles. Today we are chatting with Mark Carroll, President and CEO of Breathe California of Los Angeles, or Breathe LA, who has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Mark, for joining us today. It's my pleasure. The mission of Breathe LA is kind of in the title. Talk about that mission and how it affects people across Los Angeles County. So we're called Breathe LA. We weren't always called Breathe LA. We used to be the uh, LA Society for the Study and Prevention of Tuberculosis. In 1903, when we were formed, tuberculosis was the major disease affecting everyone. And uh, one out of every seven people that had ever been born had died of tuberculosis. Uh, it is still a major disease worldwide. Uh, one out of every 10 people, it's estimated, carry the, the bacteria. But uh, in the US, we've primarily uh, addressed tuberculosis. And so right now, our mission is to focus on lung health generally. And we have programs that focus on asthma, on COPD, which some people might know better as emphysema and chronic bron bronchitis. And uh, we do work with um, both the public as well as physicians. We uh, fund research, we conduct research on lung health, and we also have educational programs. We're also working in Sacramento on advocacy and trying to get laws passed to help improve lung health. And one of the big issues right now that we're dealing with is the vaping issue. So all of this together deals with the lungs, and that's really what, what we're focused on. It's really interesting. The, the origin of the organization starting in 1903, uh, coming uh, out of tuberculosis, a lung disease, a chronic lung disease, where in those days there was absolutely no cure and no particularly effective treatment. And then you evolve over time as treatment is provided, as research first and then treatment is provided, um, the issues, the lung issues that one has um, in this county can be addressed through the competencies that have been developed through the treatment of tuberculosis. And so you shift your mission. Your mission. It's not really about tuberculosis at that point, you're thinking, right. the organization is thinking. It's really about breathing. Correct. And then over time, you have kept that focus and then as particulates come into the air and we're talking about uh, pollution, emphysema, COPD now called, and asthma, and, and now this, this whole um, epidemic of self-inflicted harm through vaping, um, you're evolving the organization, but the one theme is being able to breathe freely. Absolutely, and making sure that people's lungs are healthy. We're in Southern California, and Southern California has the worst air in the country. Now, compared to what they have in Asia, it's no comparison, but we used to be there, and we've done so much over the last six decades to get uh, so much better, but unfortunately, we're still the worst in the nation, and as a result, a lot of the families living, particularly near the ports or near major transportation centers, uh, are suffering disproportionately, and so uh, there's higher rates of asthma, and there's higher rates of COPD, and there's higher rates of cancers uh, closer to sources, particularly diesel sources. When you look at this this organization, let's let's deconstruct its programs. You sure. were talking about asthma and so on, but let's let's talk about uh, the three pillars. Uh, one is the actual services that you provide. Um, another is the research that that you fund and that mm -hmm. you provide. And the third is the advocacy. Um, so let's start off with the services. So you have a budget of, of $2 million. Right. And, and uh, what kind of programs do you provide in addition to, you have education, but you're also, um, you also are interacting with people. So you're transferring knowledge and you're empowering them to treat themselves. Right. So we have educational programs in over 100 schools in Los Angeles County. Uh, we have two main programs. One is called O2 for You, which is an environmental education program for middle school students, educating them about air pollution, about climate change, but also about the impact of air pollution on their lungs and on their bodies. And um, it educates the students about how other students might have asthma and what to, to recognize. Uh, we also have a program called FIRST, which is designed to educate middle school and and uh, high school students about the harms of tobacco 
and vaping. And we've been involved as an organization since the Surgeon General issued his warnings about tobacco uh, decades ago. And we have had programs to try to reduce the use of smoking. And now with the vaping epidemic, where you're seeing huge increases in students who the rates of tobacco use were going down tremendously in California. Now they're peaking up again with 20% uh, of, it's been reported that 20% of high school students have tried vaping and one out of 10 in Los Angeles uh, is a re you know vaping regularly. And so we need to change the dynamic and part of the thing we're doing is educating the parents. Uh, we have a program called Clearing the Air, the Vaping Trend, which highlights and educates parents about what they should observe, what they should look for when they want to know if their child is vaping, uh, what to know about vaping, the impacts, and we're seeing every day news stories about how kids are uh, going into the hospital because of harms to their lungs. We're seeing research about the impacts of how the chemicals in the vaping liquids are, once they're combusted, uh, they're changing into other chemicals that are carcinogenic or have other, uh, uh, like diacetyl, have other impacts on the lungs. So it's, it's opening the eyes of a lot of parents out there. And we're also going into the schools and, and educating the kids about it as well. Um, those are the education programs we have. But as you mentioned, we also do research. So we're funding uh, research on asthma. We're funding research on COPD. We're funding research, um, uh, we've funded research on education programs to see what it needs to include so that they can be successful. And uh, we also have research that we're working on with Queens Care Health uh, to develop a uh, patient self-management program on COPD, which is another big issue that people generally aren't aware of. Uh, COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary, pulmonary disease, which uh, is much more common than people uh, seem to understand. It, it is the cause of Barbara Bush's death and Leonard Nimoy's death and a whole host. And a lot of people get it from smoking, but the air pollution can also impact it. It's a progressive reduction in the capacity of the lungs to, uh, to absorb oxygen, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And at a certain point, your lungs just are unable to absorb oxygen. And it becomes very, very difficult. You can take in the air but it's very difficult to expel the air out of your lungs. And so it, it causes a lot of um, difficulty. Uh, people have to go on oxygen and they have difficulty moving a few steps or going right. to the restroom. And so people often become homebound when the disease progresses. And it is a disease that you can't get rid of, but you can uh, try to arrest its progression with certain treatments. And so we're trying to educate people with COPD about what they can do, uh, exercises and other techniques, medications, how to work with their doctors on these things. Uh, and we're also going out and we have a program that, that we do um, to go out to senior centers and health fairs where we bring registered re respiratory therapists to screen people. We, we, we've gone to some health fairs and people see the screeners and they come over and they say, I want to get tested. And uh, we're, we're at some health fairs, we're testing over 200 people uh, to see if they are at risk of COPD or asthma. Talk about uh, vaping. They estimate that there's over 15,000 different flavor options out on the market today. As a parent, you, you worry about Halloween because you know that the kids are so excited that they want to go out and get their candy for one day a year and, and what the, to, tobacco marketers are doing and the vape marketers are doing and a lot of them are the same is trying to make Halloween every day. They want these kids to smoke and these, they want these kids to vape and the way they're doing it is saying what do they love? They love candy. Let's give it to them. And kids are getting addicted and telling us that they didn't realize it was addictive. They didn't realize it was included nicotine. They didn't know what the impact of nicotine was. and now they regret doing it, but they're addicted to it. Right. And we have uh, someone who's very, a, a volunteer with our organization who's a respiratory technician, respiratory therapist, 
who uh, said that he's recently seen some kids, some students who, who he's tested uh, who were vaping for just two years, regularly vaping, and their lungs are like a 70-year-old with COPD. Uh, it has really damaged their lungs, and we're seeing more and more stories of kids going to the hospital and uh, having longer-term impacts from vaping. Some of it's because, as teenagers, they're coming up with games to compete with each other about the vaping, and they're using the vaping um, devices to, uh, as they inhale, to try to overheat the batteries and to try to uh, do tricks with the, the, the vapor. And that only causes the, it to heat up more, causes more damage in the lungs. lungs. In many respects, Breathe LA is actually giving voice to those people who have either directly suffered from lung issues um, or their families. Mm -hmm. it's, it, 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 it becomes a way for those with the experience, the negative experience, to communicate to future generations. Absolutely. And we know that the more we do now, the fewer people will be harmed in the future. And because there wasn't a lot of efforts done in the 1950s and 60s uh, to curb smoking until the Surgeon General announced um, the connection, uh, a lot of people got addicted, and that's why there are the rates of people with lung disease today. So we have a lot of work to do to address all these kids who um, prevent all these kids who are taking up vaping and address all of these families who have kids with asthma so that um, the future generations have healthier lungs than, than the generations that are around today. Well, Mark Carroll, thank you so much for describing the critical work of Breathe LA. And thank you so much for your insights. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.